Um, so hi everyone. Um, it's, it's so nice to virtually present in first backstage. I'm so sorry I couldn't make it in person, but I hope to make it next year in person. So um, I'm going to be talking about um, some best practices and I've been in open source for over three years now. So I'm going to be sharing some best practices that I have learned over three years on making an effective open source contribution. And this talk is for folks that are trying to make their first contribution, for folks that are even long-term contributors that are looking for new ways to, you know, impact the community and engage with their communities. And also for companies that are looking to, you know, help open source communities as well. So a bit of an intro on me. Uh, I know there has been like a long intro, but um, first um, I'm a junior open source consultant at Bitegia and, and we're part of um, the drink partners. And um, I know you've, you might have seen Bitegia, you know, on your drinks, right? And what I do at Bitegia is my, I help um, open source um, foundations, open source um, companies, and even companies that want to start up inner source programs help create metrics and help them um, assess the health of their open source projects and get a lot of metrics. So um, if you if you want to, you can go check out um, Biteja and learn more about how Biteja helps foundations and companies set up OSPOs and inner source program offices. I'm also a DEI badging maintainer. If you have checked the site, I'm sure you should have seen that um, first backstage um, got a gold badge for um, diversity and inclusion. So I'm one of the DEI badge maintainers at the Chaos Project. And I also lead the community, the chapter of um, the Chaos Project here in Africa. And I volunteer as a program manager at Open Source Community Africa. And I'm also uh, one of the GitHub stars um, recognized around the world. So that's um, a bit of a, an intro about me. And you can find me at Ikrika Ruth on Twitter uh, and connect with me. So um, like I said, I have, um, I've been doing open source for three years now. I started back in 2020 and, you know, contributing to open source, I have seen a lot of um, beginners because I focus, my focus in open source is helping beginners um, trying to find their footing in tech and also within open source and help using open source to grow their careers. And I've seen um, in the past three years, people have had misconceptions about contributing to open source. And these are some of the things that I've seen uh, while talking to beginners and even while giving presentations in conferences and connecting with people so a lot of times i have especially with like newbies in tech people just getting started in tech i've seen a lot of people have that misconception that you know open source is just for people that have five years of experience people that have been coding for a long time people that have been doing tech for a long time i've seen people make that misconception and because of it they are not able to contribute to open source or they shy away from open source because of that um, because of that misconception that they can only give value to the project if they are experts so even for maintainers in the room and people that have open source projects please try as 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 you en engage with people especially that are beginners try to um you know let them know that they can contribute to open source even while they are beginners because going back to how i started open source i actually started open source from um you know three months into learning Python, and I had already started giving value to, to an open source project. So every time I make a presentation, I try to make this point clear because I, I think so many people do not know that um, people, beginners in tech do struggle with this misconception that um, they cannot give value to open source projects. Another thing that I have seen, which um, I'm sure a lot of people in the room will agree with me, is that people when people hear about open source, all they think about is, okay, I have to write code. And if I don't write code, that means I can't give any value to this project. So um, a lot of times I, I see people in conferences present talks about how to make non-code contributions in open source. So um, over, over my time in open source, I also let um, beginners and even people interested in open source that non-code contributions are welcome in open source. I think when I started, when I started open source, I, I started with code, I started contributing code at first, and then 
over time, I think two years down the line, I still do non-code. Con my major contributions have been non-code contributions in documentation, in community management, in even program program management as well. So I try to make this clear to people that you can also make contributions as a non-code contributor. Um, this is another thing I see with um, people trying to get into open source, especially, um, you know, it's it's not it's not it's not about quantity right it's it's about like it's not about the the green squares not like having a lot of green squares is a bad thing because i see um there's i think there was a trend um towards the end of last year where people were sharing um their github graphs which is great but um you know, I do not, I, I, I like to tell people, like, especially with people getting started in open source and even people that have been there, it's not just about like how much contributions you make to that project. It's not about the green squares, the green squares. It's not about the code contributions, but all contributions that you make are valid. So um, I think this is the, um, this is where I go into like um, the best practices that I've seen over the years. And these are things that I have applied personally uh, when I started contributing to open source. So I want to share these best practices with you on how you can make quality open source contributions in communities. So the first thing um, you, like I feel that you should like, I, I even started doing was when I wanted to get into open source, I, there were, there were a lot of projects. Like I had, there were a lot of options, right? There were a lot of projects, but I had to look at the project that aligned with my interests, uh, my passion and my value. And like I said, I am very passionate about beginners, um, try, um, trying to get beginners or helping beginners get started in open source. And when I found the chaos project, um, you know, chaos, if you're not familiar with the chaos project, it means um, community health analytics um, in open source software, right? Where we create metrics, um, we have different working groups that create metrics for open source communities to be able to analyze health in their project. Now, um, coming from a diverse background and looking at all the all the um, challenges that I would face um, trying to contribute to open source, I found the Chaos Project as a place that I could I could um, define things that I could add my quota. So that project, selecting the Chaos Project as a project that I wanted to you know attach myself with really helped me um you know make valid and like make quality contributions rather to this project so um i think the first thing when you're trying either trying to get into open source or even as um you know being in open source already selecting projects that you know align with your interests and your values help you make better contributions to that open source project also um choosing an area that you can focus on this is something else you don't just like making it's it's fine to make like different contributions it's fine to be everywhere but if you want to be at your best if you want to give quality i usually recommend that you choose like an area in that project or in that community it could be documentation it could be improving the code quality it could be community management it could be program management um, just choosing an area where you can focus on because so many times um, with open source projects and communities, you see a lot of times that there are different things to do. There are like a ton of things like you can you can stay all day contributing to one project. So you have to choose an area that you need to focus on so that you give all your energy on that particular area and you help other people that are you know within that area. So choosing an area, a niche that you can focus on helps you give quality back to that open source project or community. Um, most of the time people want to be drive-by contributors and that's that's perfectly fine um especially like people that do have like their nine to five and they they are they have like a lot of things on their hands sometimes you might not be able to even join the community or engage with the community but usually i'd recommend that if you can um joining the community being part of the community kind of helps you blend into the project because i've i've seen so many times where people come in um you know make um 
one-time contributions and they're not able to get in touch with the project but when they join the community it begins to like it, it affects on their growth process and they're able to make quality contributions you're able to know how to help the community you're able to connect with people you're able to kind of like make connections uh, make increase your network while joining the community and make quality contributions and sign up for places um, that need help so um, if you can, um, I would recommend being part of the community. I think um, there's this um, picture I saw one time in a book um, where I think it was a conference picture where the um, the description, like the, the, the quote on the shirt was, um, I came for the code, but I stayed for the community. So a lot of times like community, um, the, the community bonding is like really important. So if you can, I would recommend that you join commun the community. Um, another thing is um, being vocal. Um, and this is something I've seen um, a lot um, from, you know, people contributing that are from, you know, um, underrepresented areas it's really hard like i know my first open source contribution or the first time i joined um it, the community i was really it was really hard for me to give my speak up or ask questions or even ask for help like it's it can be hard and it can be difficult sometimes but um I think um, open source communities are really welcoming and I know people will definitely agree with me, like everybody wants to hear what you want to say. So um, it's it's important that you um, be vocal about your concerns. You ask questions where you're not clear because a lot of times, especially with um, projects and communities that do a lot of meetings, a lot of like um, sync meetings, you need to to participate. You can be vocal, and you might not be um, raising your hand to speak. These days, you can you just use the chat to communicate your ideas. So I I would recommend also that when you are trying to contribute to open source or when you're in a community, when you've chosen that project that you want to focus on, being vocal and asking questions about how you can participate and how you can help helps you make um, quality contribution and helps you know where you um, can. Um, giving more strength and more focus. So please um, always um, be vocal about your concerns when you're in open source projects and communities. Also, helping others learn is really, really important. Like uh, mentorship, not just keeping everything to yourself. It's, it's, it's one really very important way to contribute to open source because a lot of times in communities, you see people, you see newcomers, newcomers trooping here and there. So while you're also learning, while you're also growing in the project, while you're also, um, you know, figuring things out, right? You should help others, like help the next newcomer, help the next person learn how to contribute. Um, sometimes like you see open source, some open source projects that I've seen, they have like newcomers channel and people pop in those channels to ask questions, to, you know, um, figure out like what bug they're facing, how they can overcome their bug. Um, and when I consider contributing to open source, I had a lot of troubles with Git. I still do have troubles with Git though, but um, I think that has reduced. So um, when I start contributing to open source, I would have people help me um, you know, on the Git process, trying to just submit one PR. You see a lot of people struggling to just make a particular commit. So trying to help others learn, answering one question in the newcomer's channel or showing others how to contribute or pointing others in the direction to where to contribute. Because it, I, I would say um, one of the, the key areas that have helped me grow in open source is people recommending things that um, people recommending projects for me and things that I could do. So even pointing people in the right direction on how they can how they can contribute is also a valid way. And if you can't also mentorship is also um, um, a long term way to contribute. So helping people grow in that community, it's a very quality contribution and it helps the project grow um, better. Also accepting feedback um, because the open source process, um, the review process, it can really be very daunting, daunting for like beginners when um, when they submit a PR, imagine someone submits a PR and then there's a ton of comments in, 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 that, in that PR. It can be daunting and it can make people want to shy away from contributing again. But 
um something i visually recommend and say is accept feedback gracefully and try to even ask questions because sometimes it can get really frustrating while you're trying to submit one commit and you just wake up to a lot of comments on the pr so um understand that um th there's a process in contributing to a project and understand try to understand the feedback that is given to you ask questions where um, necessary um this this is this is you might not know but this is a thing because i've heard people um leave projects because um they feel that um the they made they made a pr and then it's it's it had a lot of comments and then they're like okay maybe maybe i'm not cut out for this right so try to accept feedback gracefully and also if you're the one giving feedback try to be constructive as well something i do um you know when i'm giving feedback on a pr is i thank the contributor for their contributions and like you know constructively say this is how it should be done and even points them to resources that um, they can use to learn more about how to do that. So try to accept feedback and also try to give feedback gracefully. Um, the last talk um, was like, don't give a very awesome talk about um, contributor growth and, you know, leadership, climbing up the ladder, which I would like to um, piggyback on, right? Creating a good strategy for yourself, right? Contributing to open source has a ton of benefits, like it has a lot of benefits. So um, as a contributor, um, what do you want for yourself? What do you see for yourself in this project? Every single year, um, every single year for the past three years, I have made, I've written out goals that I want to achieve with open source. So that's something that you can do for yourself. Um, sometimes um, at in open source projects and communities, they do call out for like leaders or call out for maintainers, but you can also approach um, the maintainer. If you see yourself going up that maintainer status, I feel you can also do, if the, if the project does not have a process, you can also approach, um, you know the maintainers and try to fill in the gaps and also try to like look for ways that you can expand your growth within the community try to talk about the community in um, in, in um, conferences um, try to talk about the community in um, your local regions like a lot of times i have um I have talked about projects that I contribute to and I see people from my local area contributing to those projects and even that's how um, the African chapter for the chaos project was formed where you know giving talks about uh, the chaos project in my local region attracted people to contribute to the project so creating a good strategy for yourself how do you want to climb up the ladder how do you want to grow that project how do you want to grow yourself in that project also have to you have to also think about that so that you continuously make quality contributions to the project and then for companies that are looking for ways to um you know engage more companies in the audience that are looking for ways to engage more with open source communities you can fund and partner um, with open source communities as well um i it's, it's it's a trend now that a lot of companies are beginning to look into funding through github sponsors open collective i've seen like there were a lot of talks yesterday about funding so looking for ways that you can fund open source communities and also partner with them if you cannot fund partner with them to maybe give a uh, mentorship um to um contributors or even even give like swag there are a lot of ways that you can partner and give value to the open source project so please think about funding and partnering with open source communities also for companies participating in internship programs i can i can tell you how much i can I, th I think i can talk for a whole day how much open source internships have helped like people from underrepresented regions right so participating in open source internship programs like um, google summer of code um, google season of docs um, outreachy a couple of them mlh fellow like there are a lot of them so participating in these internship programs also gives value to the open source because a lot of open source projects have beginners that are looking to become interns have people that are just getting started they're looking for their first intern position right so participating in open source internships do help um you know give value and quality um to 
open source communities and projects. So this is um, to kind of like wrap up my talk. Um, I want to talk about like quality versus quantity because I know like I referenced earlier about um, when people get into open source, they want to make like a big patch of contribution. Sometimes people want to give in like, and, and, and you can get like burnout is something that is really, really very common in open source, right? So you need to balance things up. Like you need to prioritize quality when contributing to open source and also think about yourself because sometimes you can give your all and hurt yourself in the process. I have experienced burnout before and it's really not a great place to be. So um, think about quality more, think about it, it can be a little contribution. It can be very minute, but it's as far as it's giving quality back, as far as it's helping the next person, um, it is very valuable, right? So do not always approach open source with um, a lot of, con like a ton, a ton of contributions, but think about quality, think about um, ways that you can help that project grow, how you can help that community grow right so um i hope like with this um you know best practices i i have like you've picked up some and you you begin to um give quality back and continue to give quality back to the projects that you currently contribute to um i'll take questions now but you can you know reach out to me at twitter at Ikega. i talk about open source a lot <laughs> so um uh, please reach out to me if you want to connect that's my email and also um on linkedin not so active on linkedin i'm more active on twitter but yeah please do reach out to me and let me know um if you want to connect i'll think any questions i do not see let me see are there questions um hello so again. <laughs> i am back now for the questions so we we don't have any question in the platform right now uh, i'll remind people if you have questions please uh, put them in our questions platform i po i posted a link in the in the chat at the at the our venu platform well Meanwhile, uh, I, I can comment uh, that was a very nice presentation. I, I think everybody that is a veteran today in open source has been a beginner one day. And mm -hmm. I can so. remember <laughs> I can remember how, how nervous I was when I did my first contribution. Like everybody's going to see my code. Okay. <laughs> uh, but I, I have one question for you. Uh, do you have any tips on, on tooling or, or websites or something where people can uh, find projects specifically for contribution, like something with good first issues or things like that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so with reference to that, I know like first timers only, um, they have like a lot of projects listed out that you can contribute to. Um, then there's in Africa here, there's um, this um, made in Nigeria project as well, where we kind of like, it's, it's a repository where we can like list out open source projects that people can participate with. I think those are the two that I can remember at the top of my head right now. So yeah, so first time I was only made in Nigeria project. And sometimes I see awesome lists. If you search like for awesome lists, of open source projects, you definitely mm -hmm. see um, some repositories on the web around that. So yeah, those are like some areas. And I, I, I think I, I, people ask this question to me a lot. So I think I should collate some of like some <laughs> open source projects and make it like open, um, like put it on a repo and put it out there for people to also contribute to. So I'll, I'll look forward to doing that. Yeah, I, I think I have seen sometime a website that was like crawling GitHub or something for good first issues and things like that. But as you mentioned in your uh, talk, it would be very nice if people can say things like these are my interests, these are my mm -hmm. skills and stuff like that. And uh, we have we are in the age of AI, right? So matching yeah, people sure. with <laughs> contributions should should not be that hard. People start working on that. We we need that. Yeah, <laughs> and, we do. Um, yeah, and uh, well, still no questions from the audience. So I, I have one more then as we have, I think, still four minutes. 
uh, you, you mentioned a lot of tips for first time contributors. Do, do you also have ta um, some tips for the people maintaining the projects on um, what to do to be sure that they are welcoming this uh, beginners, this first time contributors? Yeah, that, that's that's very true. So I am also a maintainer. So something I've seen a lot of times is and something I was trying to do in the chaos project is um, creating good onboarding documentation by trying to invest in onboarding, right, for um, new contributors and also trying to um, look for ways, like trying to make the ways that they can participate clear enough. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes it's not really clear on how people can contribute to the project. Like people do not know how to get started. So investing in documentation and onboarding is something that really helps people know how to contribute, like having like a clear process on how people can participate in the project and contribute. And also um something that I, I have I have done in previous projects that I've contributed to is to help maintainers as well is like issue templates, using issue templates and pull, pull request templates because a lot of times you see people just open up random issues and there's no context, right? Um, and it's very hard for any contributor to pick up an issue without context. So um, having issue templates, you know, in, in their GitHub, like, repository or in a GitHub project would help people contribute and even PR templates to help contributors know how to um, arrange their PRs so that it's, you know, it gets, um, it, it, it moves up um, very quickly. So those are things that I have seen um, to to help maintainers, you know, kind of like help the process of, because maintaining, maintaining a project is hard, trying to respond to a lot of requests and a lot of like issues can be hard. So the things that I've seen. Yeah, that's true. Uh, I think one tip I would give there is like think about uh, how, how to attract people into the community beyond PRs and issues, because I think PRs and issues can be a bit scary. Uh, if people just just <laughs> yeah. want to to ask a question, they don't think immediately about creating an issue for that, right? So maybe using discussions in GitHub or directing people mm -hmm. to to a different tool like Discord or Slack or or. Sure something mm -hmm. like that it's also nice to start the conversation that can become can evolve into a contribution exactly very true all right so that's it for me thanks a lot it was a very Thank good you. presentation and we go now into the break yeah bye